1992 marked my last year as sponsor of the RB Fishing Club. After 13 trips to Black Bear Lodge in Red Lake, Ontario, Canada, it's time to turn the job over to someone else. This final year was certainly a memorable one, starting with Kenny Smallwood and Jason Ponds catching two Lunker walleyes in the first full day of fishing. Jason's walleye is a seven pounder which broke Keith Shufflet's record of six pounds set five years ago. Now here we are, Monday night, first full day in camp. And we've got a big slug of walleyes to clean tonight. Two of the oldest people in camp tonight, Don Knapp and Ed Phillips. Uh, mature. <laughs> mature. Mature. I mature. Mature. Two of the newcomers on the trip this year, John Augustine and his son Chris, are learning the finer points of taking a Y bone out of a northern pike. Dad, tell you, those aren't half bad. There are a bunch of them in there. Kurt Pavlou and Jeff Wateska just walked in with a pair of Lunker walleyes also. Their fathers, who accompany us on these trips, have never caught fish this big. It must be in the genes. Tommy, take a look around here because starting next year, this is the guy that's going to continue the tradition of the RB kids coming up here and having a, a, a lot of fun and catching some really fine fish. Uh, Tommy, you must have been the guide tonight, is that right? Yeah, we went out to a spot that I've been going now for about four years. I call it Walleye Alley. A lot of people have other names for it, but um, we went to a spot that I go to regularly and, and I've always had good luck there catching uh, walleyes. So you, you went into that little spot where you had to put the motor on tilt to get through and yeah, I, that's what I claimed uh, was always, that's what I always called Mud Lake and everyone says, no, 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 that's not it. I, we just, just passed the opening there. We, I got them started fishing and uh, my brother and I went on to another place and thought we maybe have a little luck. Fishing was slow at the beginning, but uh, shortly after we left, they started hitting them pretty good. They caught nine. Uh, my brother and I only caught three. So. Well. You can always say you're the guide. Whenever you don't catch as many, you always say, "Well, I'm the guide." I guided. I feel good that they. I feel good that they caught fish. Yeah, so do I. The three main species of fish are walleyes, northern pike, and lake trout. Last year we caught hundreds of walleyes. This year the lake trout really hit. If Fred Wateska catches them, you know they're biting. This one's a beauty. Fifteen pounds. Guys were telling me how hard it was to catch these. So Larry and I were fixing up this morning to go out, and we said, what are we going to go for? Well, Larry says, well, heck, let's go for lake trout. So, okay, so we went out, we rigged up, and we got a couple of lures from uh, somebody in the, in the lodge, and uh, we were out about, about 10 minutes, and uh, snagged them. Larry and our boat partner had one on and lost it, and uh, all I had to tell Don Trular is, it's easy to catch these things. <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of the lure you were using? Uh, Fuzzy Does It. Fuzzy Does It. Yeah. Don Trular caught this Lunker 8-pound walleye, which is the biggest walleye we've seen in 13 years. This guy is as good at cooking them as he is at catching them. Well, this is my uh, complete my circuit on the wall for the uh, trophies here at Black Bear Lodge. I've got a, a trophy in each species, each of the three species now. And uh, this walleye went in about eight pounds out of uh, one of the uh, Portage Lakes, uh, Suffolk Lake, which is a notoriously good walleye lake up here. And uh, it should be fished regularly by uh, the people that come up here. Uh, this was caught on a simple night crawler with a gold harness. Uh, my friend Jimmy Zabito gave me a gold a spinner yesterday that I used. Uh, Ed Phillips was the, the guide. Uh, Tommy Baugh netted it, and we used uh, some of Dick Ware's bait, so everybody got in on the acting. <laughs> Kurt Pavlou and Father Pete show off some nice northern pike, which were tough to catch this week. 
Young's Bay, we took... We've got a newcomer to Black Bear Lodge, uh, Brian F Flakus. And it looks like he's been out fishing with the older brother, Ray. Is that right, Brian? Yep. Well, tell us a little bit about those fish you got there, will you? Uh, we were digging with the fuzzy dozens off the bottom. One day late. And uh, I wasn't catching anything, but my brother caught about seven or eight in a row. So he got one on, and when he got one on, he gave me the rod, and I caught this lake. How much, did, how much did that weigh? Ten and a half. Ten and a half? And it's 30, 30 inches long. Holy cow, that's a, that puts you in the Lunker Club already. 30 inches long? You got to get a Polaroid taken of that, you know. What other fish you got there? Whitefish? Yeah, two whitefish. About three or four. Did you catch those on the same jig? Yeah, my brother cut the whitefish. Well, I'll be darned. And here's old Tate Martin with a Lunker Walleye, 22 inches right on the nose. Now, Tate, I want you to be awfully truthful at this point. Were you more excited this year with that fish or last year when you netted my seven and a half pounder? You were more excited with that little thing than instead of my seven and a half pounder, huh? Well, now you tell me just how you did it. Where were you? Don Knapp, one of my good friends who came along to help nice, supervise, uh, Don, caught this nice lake trout while about, skillfully uh, using a downrigger. There seems to be some chemistry that happens when that Phillips stays up here on top and Don Knapp goes with Dick Whip. <laughs> I don't know what happened, Dick. We caught him in the upper lip, though, I think. Yeah, yeah I think he did. Down about 60 feet. Beautiful fish. We're having a no, major okay. shore lunch today. Uh, I'm going to take them out of there. Right behind our cabins. And the last couple of days, uh, we've caught, uh, oh, golly dozens and dozens of walleyes along with a few small northerns that we cleaned up in the last two nights and bagged them up, kept them on ice and now today at lunch uh, uh, we've got the adults in here uh, getting the shore lunch ready. You can see those bags of fillets there, no bones. And the men up here with the stoves have sliced the potatoes and onions and yeah. they'll uh, bread these fish in a pancake mix and, mm. Thank you. and uh, in about 15-20 minutes uh, our kids ought to be in here ready to eat like there's no tomorrow. The key to the success of our trip I really believe is the kind of adults that come along to supervise. Sure they like to fish as much as possible but they also realize that uh, what is important is that the kids have a good time and so they've all come in around 11 o'clock after fishing a couple of hours and, and they're preparing this, uh, this meal. Um, there's old Art Kunsel, one of my former students. I always claimed that Art was a better fisherman than he was a math student. And another policeman from Riverside, John Augustine. And uh, up here, the kids don't seem to mind him. They kind of like him. <laughs> and then there's uh, Dave Dvorak. Uh, he came up here, oh golly, what, seven, eight years ago, Dave? Something like that. What year? 83. 83, 10 years ago. And uh, now he's come back the last several years as a young adult, uh, drives his truck up here with all the greatest fishing equipment and stoves. And, and uh, here he is volunteering again. Uh, so the kids will have the same great time he, that he used to have. Here's the two troublemakers. This always a hot knife. Would you like to get it on film, me throwing him in the lake, Dick? No. Yeah, we should do that. <laughs> now, maybe they didn't catch a lot of fish this week, but boy, they sure know I how to eat them. I caught one today. You caught one today? Yep, yeah. it was a walleye. It was like a one-pounder. A walleye? Where'd you catch it? Just right there in South Bay. Right out in South Bay, huh? Mm -hmm. What'd you get him on? Um, Just a little Joe. Little Joe, huh? Mm -hmm. Regetta, you didn't catch anything this morning, huh? Not this morning. Yesterday, she got a lot of bites. Yesterday, I caught a northern. Did That's you? All right. Very nice to the men. We've had to take a bath in the lake all week. And we nice uh, warm Kim provides uh, nice warm My showers for the ladies. <laughs> Although uh, there wasn't an outlet for your hair dryer, was there? We don't use hair dryers. Well, that's good because if you brought them up, you wouldn't have been able to use them anyway. Not unless they're battery powered. 
Yeah, I, uh, the men, and that lake was really cold this week. Coldest week we've ever had at Black Bear Lodge for this time of the year. Well, we wouldn't know how cold the lake is. Yeah, I know you wouldn't. But I've got a feeling that before we go home, you might find out how cold that lake is. Okay, no. So just be on guard, just be on guard. And I hope you have an extra set of clothes to wear home, dry ones, that is. There's old Jason. I think that was your third lunker walleye. Is that right, Jason? Third lunker walleye. Fourth. Fourth lunker walleye? That's right, you released one, didn't you? Yep. Got last year. Left. Holy cow. Now, this is a way to live. Now, old Boswell was my, my sophomore pitcher. And I'll tell you, he's put on a few pounds since his sophomore year in high school. <laughs> when, when was the last time... Uh, that you were here? 1987. 1987, so you're back five years later. And I'll tell you, I don't think you could have that great control that you used to have when you pitched for me. No, old Brad Renard, one of the best athletes in RB history. <clears throat> Football, basketball, and baseball star. A lot of ability in that tiny body. <laughs> and now he's learned how to fish. Ryan. After shore lunch, it's back to fishing. The loons are really numerous this year. Ray Flakus explains how he lost a monster lake trout after playing it for 25 minutes. Tom Trular boats a nice 12 pounder. 15 minutes later, he landed a 13 and a half pounder that he released. A little hard. <laughs> Get off the camera. Larry Pons plays a big one for 20 minutes, only to lose it at the boat. Normally they'll set the hook themselves. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Ray Flakus has hooked another nice one. Will little brother Brian be able to net it? Tom Trular has hooked another one. He got it to the surface, but the big Laker takes another dive. Finally, it's netted. Goodbye, honey. Kurt Pavlu is into a big one. Old Dad Pavlu nets it for him while Ray Flakus gets another. All of these fish were caught in a two hour time span and in a 200 yard square area. And now the catch of the week takes place. Jim Zabladil has hooked into a fish that takes nearly an hour to get to the surface. Kevin Bornhorse is the netman. Do you think they're a little excited? This fish is a record setter 33 pounder. It beat the Black Bear Lodge record by three pounds. Even Mr. Ware got a little excited. There it is. What a fish. Yeah, baby. Yeah. After the giant Laker was taken back to the lodge to be officially weighed and measured, they returned and Kevin caught another beauty. Come on, Kevin. Lift that baby up and face me. Nice fish. After an afternoon of fabulous fishing, where more than 20 lake trout over 10 pounds were caught, we find ourselves in the fish house. I tend to get a little silly when I'm with Ed and Don, especially when Larry Pons does the interviewing. But first of all, I'd like to start with the gentleman on the right, Don Knapp. He was the one who started this trend. Don? Okay. <laughs> well, that's, that's mine because we didn't have it. <laughs> Ed, Ed is the handsome gentleman on the left. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, uh, Don, was there something interesting about how you caught this fish? Was there some kind of a downrigger problem right there? Well, there was a slight downrigger problem. Who was the captain? Oh, that, that's understandable. I snagged Jimmy Zabladil's lure. <laughs> Is that what he yeah. said? Yeah, and then he didn't tell me that. as I was untangling it, Don Knapp caught one. He thought he had the downrigger ball, but... 
This time it was a fish. <laughs> well, I think the, the second fish that was caught was by our leader, of course, Coach Ware. Oh, yeah. And uh, evidently he was ripping the heck out of the handsome gentleman on the left after he caught it. And then I think you caught yours, Ed, right, right after, after that? Right, right after. after. He, he wasn't going to. He just handed the boat. And he was mouthing off to me. Right? <laughs> did, he, uh, did he net it for you? No, not net. net because he was busy. Good idea. He was busy admiring his own. <laughs> So then Don had to net it for me because he, he didn't know I caught it really. So okay, we, we've had one week of unbelievable fishing for lake trout. In fact, we've got a, a gentleman that has come up here, I think, 10 years, who has caught a fish that is more than twice the size of any of the fish that we've caught this year. And that's Jim yeah. Zabadil. Oh, yeah. He caught a 33 pound uh, lake trout today. Yeah, I got that's him on video team. already. I understand that's that's it, a but, camp uh, record. It's a camp record. It's a camp record. What were you guys using? Uh, uh, when you caught these, uh, Dan? Sutton Spoon. Dick's, of course. Yeah, yeah, well, you don't have to ask him. Uh, <laughs> we were trolling when we uh, got in. Yes. Or half trolling. Half trolling. And what did you use, Dick? I used just a jigging spoon with a jack strap of frozen minnow. Ah, and a glob of worms in five meters. Very good. <laughs> How about you? Yeah, I had a, uh, uh, like a Cleo. And I was jigging and jigging it. Today was uh, probably the most thrilling day of fishing for Jim Zabladil in his entire life as he set the Black Bear Lodge record with a 33 pound monster lake trout, beat the old record by three pounds. And Jimmy, I think you uh, ought to take it from there. Just uh, tell the audience what happened. I got him on a uh, black and silver fuzzy does it, jigging all the way up. I thought I was snagged, then started moving. It wouldn't come up for about 25 minutes, then it started coming up, shaking his head. Then we finally saw him, when we lost it. <laughs> we couldn't believe it. And then Kevin was getting ready for the net, he was kind of in shock. Frozen. He got the head part way in, and he was trying to swing it in, but it wouldn't fit in. And it finally slipped in, kind of, he pulled it in, fell back and pulled. And then we went nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame it, Ted. On the last morning, Kevin catches and releases a nice northern. About ready to release, there he goes. Tony Bornhorse catches his first Michigan. lake trout. Lake Michigan with some guys and nothing like this. Laker. Lift them up real well. <laughs> Higher. It's a lot of fun, Jimmy. You'll go down my history books. There you go. First laker I ever caught. Get that. Gonna end up going swimming with them in this rough water. There he is. Bye-bye. As the boats come off the lake and enter South Bay, we pass a bald eagle guarding its nest. Yep. Jamie Dvorak finally did it today, a nice 13-pound northern. Jamie, you want to tell us a little bit about it? Well, Tony Bornhorse took me out fishing today, and I was going to go out lake fishing, and lake trout fishing, and he wanted to go out for northern, so I went out with him, and we went over to Muskrat Bay, and the fish there, they were just following and nobody, nothing was really striking. So he took me to another place that he said was one of the secret places. Um, anyway, I caught a little one right away. And on the second second cast, I caught this. And it turned out to be a pretty good fight. What uh, kind of lure did you get it on? Uh, rattle wrap, I believe. That's rattle a, trap. Rattle trap, silver yeah. rattle trap. <laughs> Look at all those big lake trout. And we released more than we kept. It's been a fun-filled week, but the stories that will be retold next year and at class reunions give these boys and girls a lifetime of great memories. Also, the father and son relationships that develop while fishing together are very special. Young and old, boys and girls go to it. Slick.